Hey, Brandon, good evening. Just for perspective, when I got out of the news vehicle, it said it was 112 here. 112, let that sink in. Now, having said that, we hear it all the time from people. Oh, I'm from Arkansas, I'm from Oklahoma. I can handle the heat, it's fine. But a new research, a new study suggests that we may not be as tolerable to heat than we once thought we were. The dangers of heat have been well documented. It's one of the reasons meteorologists and medical experts urge you to limit your time in it. Most people don't realize that heat is the number one weather-related killer globally. Now, new research from Penn State University has revealed some eye-opening numbers. Researchers studied 25 participants, 12 men and 13 women ranging from 18 to 34 years old, to test how their core temperature responded to increasing heat and humidity. In a controlled environment doing minimal activity, most participants saw their core temperature rise to the critical environmental limit of 104 degrees at just 88 degrees with 100% humidity or at 100 degrees at just 60% humidity. Basically, once the heat index climbs above 120, your chances for heat exhaustion or heat stroke increase dramatically. Dr. Tony Wolf was one of the researchers. The temperatures that we're seeing uh, in our studies are, are starting to occur around the globe. And so it kind of suggests to us that this is a little more of a present problem rather than a future problem. And we know that there, you know, during prolonged heat waves, we start to see increased mortality associated with those extreme heat events, and those are becoming more and more common. So um, yeah, it is quite alarming. He adds their data is more conclusive than a theorized temperature of 95 degrees at 100% humidity published in a 2010 study. And while those numbers have not yet been reached around the globe, a few places in Pakistan and New Delhi have come close, pointing to the ongoing threat of climate change globally. Dr. Wolf adds, what's more alarming is their subjects were young and healthy. This really represents the best case scenario because these are young, healthy individuals. And so when we start to vary it all away from that, that very young, healthy, best case scenario population, the, the risk starts to increase. And these aren't as extreme of temperature and humidity comp combinations as some may expect. Despite the heat, we still found some people out trying to cool off at the Bentonville Aquatic Center, and they were well aware of the dangers that heat presents. We are selling two bicycles, and I went into the garage to put air in the tires. And when I came in, I seriously felt ill for quite some length of time after I came in, because it was so hot while I was doing that. I had to drink water with ice in it for quite a long time. I also chatted with a mom whose young child was overcome by the heat this week. We were at the pool for a while. He came home and was just like exhausted and told me his stomach was hurting. He wasn't feel, feeling good. And I think it was just heat exhaustion that got him. And it wasn't even as hot as it is today. So yeah, it's just something to be aware of. Now, guys, believe me, I understand there's a lot to unpack there in that story. But Dr. Wolf tells me that right now they are currently in the phase of testing the more vulnerable age groups, the, the really young and the really old, in the hopes of comparing the, the data that they got recently to this new data to show just how dangerous these extreme temperatures are. We're live in Bentonville. Robert Sir, 4029 News.